Hello there. Let's put some olive oil in coffee today. Now I'm a little bit late on this topic, but a couple of months ago, Starbucks released their Oleato line of drinks. This is basically the addition of olive oil into a few select kind of signature beverages they were making. This is a very limited release. I believe it happened in February and it started out at a few of their select locations, and I believe they were mostly reserves. There was one in Milan, I believe there was one in Seattle, um, there was just a few across both Europe and also US. So safe to say this was not a wide release, it was more of like a fun, special showcase of olive oil and coffee as a new combination. Well, kind of new. Starbucks has taken a lot of things and kind of like turned them into new things, but they aren't always new, if you know what I mean. Now one thing I want to also preface this video with is we're going to be talking about Starbucks as they have repopularize this combination of olive oil and espresso, but Starbucks itself got some thoughts on. I also have a lot of thoughts on Howard Schultz. They've recently been involved in a lot of things that are quite bad. If you want to learn more about that, I'm going to link some articles down in the description below. Again, we're going to be referencing Starbucks here as uh, some of the recipes here, but I want to do my best not to not to support or condone any of the actions they've recently taken, especially in relation to unions. Just getting that out there, be down in the description, highly recommend you learn more about it. Let's continue. Now the primary form that the Oleato was released in was the Oleato Latte. So simply enough, coffee, milk, and olive oil. And specifically, oat milk. That seemed to be the, the vehicle that everyone was spreading the olive oil with. Now along with that standard latte, there were also a couple other specialty drinks specifically an iced cortado that had olive oil, but also a few other things. I have rough recipes for both that now exist, so we're gonna do our best to recreate them. We're gonna try to rate them and give some thoughts, I suppose. This is kind of just like a, let's try it, let's see if it's, <laughs> let's see if this is a good thing or a very questionable thing. And it might be both and that might be fine. I get my iPad out here so I don't misquote myself. Now the first thing we're gonna do is just the very standard oat milk Oleato latte. Of course, we have espresso. We're not using Starbucks beans today, but in kind of keeping with the Starbucks flavor profile, I suppose we are using a darker roast than I would usually use in my lattes if this was just for me. Now we'll be using a barista series oat milk. Uh, we'll talk in the future about the difference between barista series and non-barista series, but kind of as a summation, Barista series alternative milks are formulated uh, to better hold air and heat and to more accentuate the flavors of coffee in that pairing. So important distinction there. And lastly, we have some nice high quality olive oil. Now in all of my research, it was a little bit difficult to figure out the exact amount of olive oil that was going into each drink. However, the general consensus seems to be that it's a rough tablespoon per drink, which is a good amount of olive oil. Now we're gonna be making a 12 ounce latte today. It's gonna be an oat latte, it's going to have olive oil. Let's just get started. I need my tools. Starbucks in their stores uses Partana olive oil. We're doing something a little bit different. This is an olive oil that I really like. Again, not sponsored. I know you've probably seen this a lot. Uh, it's been a real buzz in like kind of the marketing world, um, but I'm gonna be using the Grazza olive oil. I actually kind of stole this maybe from Dakota who's a, a friend of mine, but also was a competitor um, in the USBC this year. So this is USBC finalist olive oil. I'm gonna go get a tablespoon. Let's figure out the weight of this olive oil. Now, specifically the way that olive oil is added into uh, the Starbucks Oleato drinks is that it's steamed into the oat milk. So tablespoon, that's gonna be about 14 grams of olive oil in total. And we have just under 300 grams of our barista series oat milk. Or I suppose you could just say barista dish. This is, <laughs> this is barista oat milk. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that today. The differentiation though is important. We will say off the bat, it doesn't look terribly appetizing. Uh, we have olive oil just kind of floating at the top here. I'm curious if when steaming, this will kind of emulsify altogether. We'll find out. I brought us a clear glass so we can see if any separation happens. But for now, some espresso. And again, as I mentioned, we're not using a true Starbucks roast, but we are using a darker roast. No, I don't drink a ton of dark roast. It's not usually the flavor profile that I personally prefer, but I must say consistently the smell of a dark roast brewing either in filter or espresso, it's just very nostalgic. It just, it always smells so good. So double shot of espresso in our cup. Now um, let's do some very oily steaming. Well, I will say during the steaming process, this all seemed to homogenize pretty nicely. So we no longer have that oil just like sitting on top. 
I would also say that pour is pretty normally for oat milk. This is it. <laughs> this is our, our very exciting Oli Auto Latte we have made. So uh, let's taste. Doesn't smell too different. Lattes usually don't smell like too much unless you add like an additional aroma or fragrance to it, but so far seems normal. The olive oil, oh, it's so interesting. The olive oil definitely sits at the back of each sip. Taste it again. Let me see if I can better describe this. Like the front of each sip tastes like a pretty standard oat milk latte, but at the end, you kind of get this like, this round like, I'm trying not to describe it as oily because it, it doesn't like taste excessively oily, but that richness of the olive oil really comes through at the back half. In terms of like the tactile like feeling of each sip, it's not crazy different from a latte, I suppose. I think there is a little bit of coating that happens um, that kind of lingers in your mouth, but in, it doesn't feel excessively oily, I suppose. I can tell you that I prefer this to a lot of other additions <laughs> I've seen put into lattes. Uh, this is not too bad. I think it works really nicely because it's warm. I feel like if this was a cold latte without it being all incorporated, this would be a little bit more lackluster. I don't know. I'm like trying to think of more things to say about this, but this is this is altogether decently pleasant. I don't know if I prefer this more than an oat latte without olive oil. It's an interesting experience though. Now, alongside uh, the pretty standard Oleato latte, there were also a couple other like signature Oleato drinks that came out as well. And one of them really caught my attention and that was the iced cortado. Now a cortado traditionally is a one-to-one -one ratio from espresso to steamed milk. So usually two ounces of espresso to two ounces of steamed milk. It's a cute little four ounce drink it's a little bit larger than a macchiato. It's a little bit smaller than a cappuccino. It's a nice in-between. You don't traditionally see it iced though. However, we're just kind of talking proportions here. So you can most certainly make a little tiny iced cortado that is two ounces of espresso and two ounces of milk. It just won't be steamed. However, they went a little bit further with it and in a way that I think could be pretty tasty. You know, I'm just kind of continuing to sip on this, which I think proves that it is pretty tasty. And all in all, it's not separating yet. Well, I'm curious if we'll start to see some separation happen, but so far so good. Anyway, the Oleato Iced Cortado. So of course we start with a double shot of espresso. We also start with two ounces of oat milk. We then have olive oil of an undisclosed amount and we have two other ingredients. The first one is going to be a very specific orange syrup. And the other one is orange bitters. Now I say a very specific syrup because they're using a particular type of sugar in this, a sugar that's known uh, most commonly in the US as panela. Now this is an unrefined cane sugar. Um, so it's a little bit different from what you traditionally see in like cafe simple syrups. Uh, this cane sugar has a lot more like minerality in its flavor. Uh, it also tastes, I think, probably most akin to a brown sugar. There's like a deep, molassesy like kind of sweetness and taste to it. It's not like a brown sugar doesn't have like re-added molasses to it, but I think that's probably the closest comparison. And if you're making this at home and you don't have access to panela, you can probably get away with brown sugar and it will be somewhat comparable. Now I made a pretty standard like orange infused simple syrup using panela. Um, so it's, it's a simple syrup with orange juice. <laughs> it's, it's pretty easy. Have some orange peel steeped in there as well and you're set up with a nice like citrusy, sweet, deep, caramelly panela syrup. Now you'll note that this one with being iced, we don't really have a steaming component to the to the milk being incorporated with the olive oil. Found a couple pictures online of people actually trying this iced oleato cortado. I was gonna use the word gruesome. It's not gruesome, but you do just kind of have olive oil floating on top. So let's try to make this cortado and let's try to make it taste good, but also look good. There are not a lot of situations where oil just floating on top of coffee looks very appetizing. Now once more, start off with some espresso and some oat milk. Okay, so we have our espresso done. Now we could build this entire drink over a cup of ice. However, I think we should build the drink and then add the ice, specifically because we're looking for a cortado ratio and I think that's gonna be a little bit easier to find and balance with our syrup if we aren't trying to like factor in the amount of space the ice also takes up in the cup. So let's start with our syrup and our bitters. As I mentioned before, I made this syrup to as closely replicate what they're using as possible. So you notice it's very dark. That's because it's an unrefined cane sugar. Uh, and it also has a good amount of orange in there. So it's zesty um, and dark and tasty and like all the good stuff. 
Well, this is a cortado. We don't need a ton of syrup for this. I am just coating the bottom of my cup right now. That ends up being about 10 grams of syrup. Now this drink calls for a few dashes of orange bitters, so I have acquired some orange bitters. We're gonna go for two dashes here. That was slightly more than two dashes. We'll moderate on our second try if we need to. Okay, swirl that up. Add our espresso. We'll actually measure out our milk here. Two ounces of milk. And now a full tablespoon of olive oil feels a little excessive for this ratio. So I think we're gonna drop down to about a teaspoon. Now a teaspoon for all curious is about just under five grams of olive oil. It's just floating on top there. I guess we mix, add ice and taste. I'm guessing this one is gonna be a little more coating uh, than the last one was. Perhaps a little bit more olive oil forward. Like it's pretty. The olive oil doesn't necessarily look bad right now, but I'm not excited to just like sip through that to get to the rest of my drink. Yeah, no, it doesn't really, <laughs> nothing really homogenizes here. <laughs> the, uh, the little oil bubbles just break down into smaller ones. Well, let's get some ice. Let's try this. It like almost makes me mad that it's not a bad looking drink. I mean, I personally like really enjoy olive oil like as an ingredient, as something on its own. I think high quality olive oil is really delicious. So when I see it, I'm like excited to drink it. Just the idea of it being just the top layer of my latte though, a little less excited. All right, cheers. Okay, I need to go back for a second sip. Upon initial tasting, like it's just, it's all olive oil. <laughs> it's just a, it's a barrage of olive oil hitting the, the your lips before anything else does. It really, really lingers. <laughs> this is an interesting one for sure. I mean, the drink itself is rather lovely, like a spiced dark orange syrup. Orange bitters is kind of like a balancing element. Espresso, oat milk, all of that is awesome. I just, I'm really kind of fuzzled about the addition of a, a top layer of olive oil on all of this. I think this could be good if this was one homogenous drinking experience of all the ingredients together like we had with that latte. But right now, that, uh, that separate layer that really just washes over your lips before you get to the drink is, a little bit off-putting. I saw this phrase in an article that was reviewing trying these drinks in the actual roastery. It very much holds true here. The olive oil acts as like an extra layer of chapstick that you get to take away with the drink. Because my lips, still to this moment, are very, very coated in oil, which is nice. I, I like being moisturized, just not by my coffee, I don't think. There's a part of me that's really curious if this would taste good if we frothed all of the ingredients together, or at the very least, the olive oil and the oat milk, like we did with the hot latte, but without the addition of heat. So I think we make this one more time. We keep everything the same, but instead of just adding the milk and the olive oil in, we're gonna use a frother. We're gonna like froth it all together for lack of a better word, and then we're gonna add it. Hopefully that will add some, uh, some texture to this as well. Okay, one more shot of espresso. I like the ratio on everything else though. So we'll do 10 grams of syrup once more. Two plus a little bit dashes of bitters. Double shot of espresso. Okay, but now instead of adding our milk to there, I'll pop that in a pitcher, teaspoon of olive oil and a milk frother. So we're just gonna kind of cold froth this a bit. Homogenize, add some texture, all the good stuff. Really want this to be just one ingredient here. Okay, definitely get some texture in there. Kind of stir this up. Let's add some ice and taste. Now you can see on this one that there are some layers of separation, but it's not in terms of olive oil and then drink. We have like this kind of lighter foam that's happened up here and that's because we added a lot of air to this milk. Now it will dissipate a good bit faster than if the milk was hot, but for now we have some texture and then the rest of the drink is down below. And there is no visible olive oil, so bodes well. This is a lot better. This is worlds better than the drink I just had. This is kind of the same experience as that first hot latte that we had in the sense that the olive oil doesn't really hit at the front. It very much sits at the back of each sip. I don't know if it makes the drink that much better than if there wasn't olive oil. It's certainly not like a negative addition in this way. It's just kind of like the same maybe slightly better. I guess my question is a little bit why <laughs> for all of this, if I'm being totally honest. And for anyone curious, this is that latte that we had before. And as you can see, um, there hasn't really been any like 
separation. It's all still pretty homogenous together. So yeah, these are the Oleato drinks, at least the best that I can make at home based on what I know of how these are made in the actual Starbucks stores. I think my biggest takeaway really is just why. <laughs> you know, in some ways, I think these add a little bit to the drinks, but in some ways they definitely take away. I suppose there are some folks who might really like this. Um, I think it is most certainly best hot. I don't think there's a really good way to do this cold unless you really like that just deluge of olive oil in each sip. It's not for me, maybe for someone else. I don't even really have like a numbers ranking for these. Like I really just think this was a fun taste test. And if you'd like to try this at home, maybe give it a shot yourself. I think this is a very divisive drink and each person will have very different thoughts about it. I feel like a lot of, you know, kind of trends with adding things to, adding things to coffee really ends up with being just like adding different types of fat. You know, you add butter, you add milk, you now add olive oil. Like just kind of pick the fat that you like best in addition to your coffee. You just do you in what you're putting into your coffee. But these were my thoughts about what I've put into my coffee. So until next time, when Morgan drinks coffee, you can find me here on YouTube once a week, plus YouTube Shorts. You can also find me on TikTok or Instagram almost every single day. I'm gonna go sip through a little bit more of this. I don't know how much olive oil coffee I actually wanna drink right now. Uh, but until next time, have a good day, everyone. See you later.